My name is Farid Cade. I am the uh, Biolac product manager at Parks Incorporation. The purpose of this presentation is to, uh, over, to provide an overview of the Biolac process uh, that Parks and provides. Uh, during this presentation, we'll discuss the uh, process background and applications, system components, uh, capabilities of the Biolac process and its advantages, and we'll also review some of the existing installations and case studies. So the Biolac process is an activated sludge extended aeration uh, that uh, Parkson has been providing for over 25 years. It's a proven process with a lot of installations over 800 in North America and another uh, over 100 installations uh, around the globe. Um, it's got a wide range of applications. The Biolac is, is installed in municipal application for municipal and domestic wastewater treatment as well as industrial applications, uh, wide range as well in the industrial uh, field. Uh, some of the uh, design bases for the Biolac process as an extended aeration, uh, it's, a, it's a long sludge age process, meaning that the sludge uh, uh, age or the uh, MCRT for the Biolac process is, is 30 to 70 days. Um, also, the, the, the um, organic loading of the process uh, typically is around 18 to 15, day, uh, 8 to 15 days. Uh, of uh, organic loading, pound of BOD per thousand cubic feet of volume per day. It's a longer uh, hydraulic re retention time, one to two days. And in some industrial application, the hydraulic retention time would, can go up to six days based on the uh, organic load to the plant. Uh, food to microorganism is within a typical range for extended aeration, uh, 0.05 to 0.07 uh, uh, pound of uh, 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 BOD per, per pound of biomass. Um, uh, the bio, the, the Biolac process is a low biosolid yield, with, which is a major advantage. Uh, it produces uh, uh, a yield of 0.4 to 0.6 uh, of, of uh, solids per, per pound of BOD removed. Uh, therefore, it's, it's an advantage over other processes. So, so really what differentiates the Biolac process versus other activated sludge technologies on the market? Uh, one of the main advantages is that it's a single basin process, so it's economical construction. Uh, Biolac can be installed in um, concrete basins like most of the activated such processes out there, but also a lot of the Biolac installations are um, in earthen basins, which is a uh, tremendous cost uh, saving for minimum uh, uh, civil work needed and minimum uh, concrete needed. Uh, it's a very simple operation, um, for, so it's a peace of mind for the operator. Uh, to, to, to manage and provides excellent and consistent uh, uh, effluent quality as well as low biosolids uh, production as I mentioned earlier which is really a uh, cost saving advantage overall uh, for, the, for, the, for the wastewater plant. Um, in this graph I, I showed uh, the, the biolac, typical biolac system uh, components. Uh, typical uh, system that Parkson provides will include uh, the biolac basin which is the aeration equipment as well as the integral clarifiers uh, adjacent and share common wall with the Biolac Basin, uh, the aeration blowers, and uh, as well as the electrical controls. So these are typical components of, of the Biolac process. Um, here's a picture of the Biolac Basin, similar uh, in, a, in a location in Hawaii, showing the aeration chains as well as some of the integral clarifiers. Uh, as you see, the aeration chain, which uh, I will uh, describe in more details later, um, are not um, uh, identical widths from, from each other on the surface. One of the misconceptions um, out there in the industry because the Biolac basins are typically in earthen basins that the Biolac uh, is, is thought of as a lagoon process. Lagoon is a facultative wastewater treatment process that, that is not as reliable in producing consistent, excellent effluent quality. Um, requires much larger basins and much more hydraulic retention time. In this picture, I show an existing lagoon process that um, at some point was upgraded with the Biolac process, and you, you, you see in that picture uh, the major reduction in footprint. So, so the Biolac process uh, provides a major advantage in terms of footprint and, and effluent quality as well uh, versus a lagoon process. Really, the backbone of the Biolac system is the uh, 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 chain assemblies and, and the biofusers. Um, you, uh, um, after the air comes from the blowers, it, it, uh, it flows through the uh, floating aeration chain on the surface. Uh, that's the first uh, component of the, of the uh, Biolac uh, aeration. 
where the and then the uh, the airflow uh, goes through the two downcomers down to the uh, biofuser. Uh, then the biofuser uh, takes that air and releases it in fine bubble aeration into the system, uh, into the liquid. Uh, so so uh, the, the biolac aeration is actually fine bubble aeration uh, distribute the air uh, evenly throughout the basin. And really the main um, advantage or, or difference in the biolac system versus conventional aeration systems, uh, conventional fine bubble aeration system is that it's not attached to the bottom of the basin. Uh, so it's, it's uh, allowed to float freely uh, within about a foot above the bottom of the, of the basin. Here's another picture that shows the biofuser, uh, the heart of the biolac system. Biofuser contains of uh, multiple tubes, up to five aeration tubes per, um, um, per biofuser unit. Um, it's, uh, it's balanced with two, two downcomers from the side, therefore the, the uh, um, oxygen transfer efficiency is consistent throughout the tubes. Uh, um, it's uh, very easily retrievable because it's not uh, mounted on the bottom for maintenance. It's a, uh, an operator on a boat can retrieve the diffuser to the surface and provide any maintenance needed. Uh, so never, uh, there's never a need to drain the basin. Uh, um, sometimes uh, integral weights are added to the biofuser to keep it at the bottom. Um, and it's really uh, with that capability and the flexibility adding up to five diffuser uh, aeration tubes, it provides very easy flexibility for expandability in the future. Uh, so in the, in, the, in the basic design, normally we utilize three or four diffusers and in future expandability, add a fifth diffuser which provide 20% uh, additional aeration capacity, mainly just by retrieving the diffuser and adding another tube. So uh, it's, it's a very flexible system to upgrade. Uh, the, in terms of the uh, uh, aeration uh, process in the basin, um, the, when, when the air pressure comes in the, diffu the, uh, uh, the floating aeration chains, it provides energy for the aeration chain to start uh, moving uh, uh, one direction and, and another, uh, which allows then the biofuser at the bottom uh, to have a movement uh, from side to side. Uh, this to, uh, is the main really advantage of this aeration system. Uh, this movement allows the fine bubble aeration as uh, the, uh, the fine bubble as they're rising to the surface to cover more uh, surface area versus a fixed aeration basin. Uh, so it's, it's a much more uh, efficiently uh, a mixing system versus conventional aeration. Um, if you see in this picture, we show a conventional uh, fine bubble aeration unit uh, mounted on the bottom. Uh, typically, the air bubble rising to the surface cover uh, a specific column and a specific area um, versus the biolac basin as the uh, chains are moving um, uh, back and forth. They cover more surface area. This is, uh, uh, provides uh, almost a, a third or a half of the mixing efficiency of a typical uh, conventional um, aeration system. Uh, with the biolac system, we guarantee turn down to four CFM per thousand cubic feet of volume. Um, this becomes very critical um, in, in, in applications where there is denitrification requirement uh, and turn down becomes critical to control the oxygen level in each zone, uh, which we'll discuss in, in the next few slides. In this video, I wanted to show a movement in the clean, clear, water, uh, clear water of the fine bubble rising as the diffuser is moving to illustrate that point that I just described. Uh, versus, uh, as I said, uh, uh, a conventional system would really cover just a certain column area. And as you see here now, the flow from the biolag basin goes through these openings into the uh, integral clarifier, uh, which I'll, I'll discuss in, in the next slide. So part of the uh, biolag system, uh, the next step after the um, aeration and the biological removal of the organic matter, we go through the clarification and, and, and 95% of the biolac applications will have the integral clarifiers uh, with common walls attached to the, to the basin. Uh, this design optimizes the, the footprint, uh, uh, you know, with, with common walls, still provides a minimum uh, concrete and, and civil cost uh, to, to, the, to the municipality or the, the, the customer and the owner. Um, and it really is uh, designed specifically uh, based on, on the application in terms of uh, widths and equipment and, and, and uh, um, uh, how the flow is going to go. So with, with the biolac basin after the flow comes from those, uh, oh, oh, the biolac basin through the openings at the bottom of the biolac, it goes through the, the hopper bottom uh, clarifier 
uh, where the sludge settles and the clear liquid stays on top. Uh, the clear liquid uh, goes over a weir assembly uh, that goes to further treatment to disinfection and, and, and dis discharge after, uh, while the uh, sludge that settles at the bottom uh, is, is removed using an airlift um, suction. Um, there's, there's a pipe um, at the bottom of the hopper that extends the length of the clarifier with um, opening designed and engineered specifically for this app, for, for the specific application. Uh, this provides a consistent quality of the sludge uh, that, that's removed and, and, and uh, sucked uh, through the air suction pipe. Uh, then um, the, the sludge is removed to the surface uh, and, and, and uh, distributed through a channel. Uh, and then uh, the return activated sludge is returned upstream, upstream of the Bialak Basin uh, by gravity. So it's, it provides uh, also uh, an energy efficient and really simple operation uh, for clarification. Here's another more uh, closer picture. And also <clears throat> one of the components in the uh, uh, Enigo clarifier is the uh, rake assembly. Uh, the purpose of the rake is to move uh, back and forth on the length of the clarifier slowly to uh, keep the sludge blanket at the bottom of the clarifier distributed uh, evenly. Uh, therefore, uh, the, uh, the sludge suction um, uh, becomes, or the sludge quality is, is consistent throughout the suction at the length of the clarifier. It's a really simple and, and cost effective uh, solution uh, for the Biolag Basin. Um, and this picture kind of shows. Uh, the components of the clarifier in more detail. At the bottom of the, of the hopper, you'll see the, uh, um, the sludge suction pi uh, pipe, which is grouted on um, uh, in, in the bottom of the hopper with the opening that are sized um, and, and engineered specifically with the pipe diameter size and the, the opening size so we can have consistent velocity throughout the pipe. Uh, it shows the rake assembly uh, cables at the top that uh, the rake would move back and forth on and uh, as well as the RISE uh, uh, airlift uh, assembly. Um, so what are, what are the benefits of, of the BIOLAC uh, process design? Um, the the BIOLAC process design, as I mentioned earlier, really is based on a long sludge age, as I mentioned, three, 30 to, to 70 days compared to conventional system. And um, in this graph, you, you see the, the, the BIOLAC, the conventional systems, typically 15 to 30 days uh, sludge age. Uh, with, with extended uh, sludge age, extended aeration sludge age, you, you, you get uh, a minimized or, or reduced uh, sludge production. Uh, therefore, the cost after that um, to treat, to further treat and stabilize the sludge is reduced. Uh, the process is a lot more stable and consistent in effluent quality, such as in, in cold climate. And uh, the operator attention with a long sludge age is, is uh, also a minimum uh, because the, the process is a lot more stable. Uh, typically, a lot of the, the BIOLAC installations are in, in small municipalities where uh, the, op the operator is not only operating the wastewater plant, but it's got other duties for the muni municipality. So it's really a peace of mind, uh, uh, an easy, simple operation. Um, for uh, requirements, when, when plants uh, require enhanced nutrient removal or biological nutrient removal, such as uh, um, denitrification, total nitrate removal, or um, uh, total phosphorus removal, Parkson has the uh, wave oxidation process, or WAVOX, that we implement with the BIOLAC process. Uh, the the WAVOX basically um, utilizes the concept of the single basin and the BIOLAC basin uh, to, to achieve the nitrification, denitrification um, in, in separate zone, which I'll explain um, uh, later on. And not only that, but also optimize the oxygen delivery and the basin, so it's uh, using electrical, simple electrical controls, which makes the process uh, more efficient and more energy efficient uh, by controlling the DO required. Uh, and it also provides uh, a great effluent quality um, and treatment throughout the season, even in cold climates, such as in, in, in North America locations. Um, in this slide, I wanted to show the conventional system versus uh, for, for uh, BNR applications versus the BIOLAC. Conventional system would require uh, separate stages, anaerobic stages and anoxic stages, and the anaerobic where the phosphorus uh, uh, release happens for future uh, or later on uh, enhanced uptake. So this is important for biological phosphorus removal. And then the anoxic uh, stage where denitrification is required. These stages would need separate concrete uh, baffles or walls 
Uh, they would need uh, independent mixers, uh, mixers running constantly, um, so that's energy spent all the, all the time. And also beside the uh, uh, return activator sludge, typically we'd have four to six times uh, average, effluent, uh, average uh, mixed liquor recycle to, to enhance the denitrification in the anoxic zone. And the Biolac Basin, all that is eliminated, and we're, we're achieving that in, in the single basin. Using the Biolac Basin, we optimize uh, uh, a group of chains, whether it's two, three, or four chains, uh, based on the design, to control each uh, these group of chains into zones, and then run each zone independently as oxic or anoxic. Oxic, where the DO would be controlled around two, uh, anoxic, the DO would be controlled uh, at below 0.5. Uh, in, the, in the oxic area, uh, the BOD removal and the nitrification occurs and takes place. Uh, and then in the anoxic area uh, downstream, uh, the, the denitrification takes place. And we can do that with the Biolac system because of the high mixing efficiency and the turndown in the Biolac uh, aeration chains. So we're using the electrical controls. We control the DO in each zone and identify anoxic, oxic uh, zones. And then every uh, uh, a period of time, or based on the DO uh, logic, then we alternate. And then the oxic zone becomes anoxic, and the anoxic zone be becomes oxic. Um, and this is uh, what creates uh, the wave of, of nitrification and, and denitrification uh, de zones and waves. Um, um, and I, I, uh, that's where the name was derived from. So, uh, so by that, we, we've achieved denitrification and nitrification in the same basin. And the advantages of having uh, this type of uh, uh, process versus a conventional system, in a conventional system, a typical anoxic zone would have a hydraulic retention time of two hours, maybe three hours. Um, in, a, in, a, in a biolag basin, if the hydraulic retention time is one day and you have four zones, therefore the hydraulic retention time in each zone is roughly six hours, so you have a more uh, a robust uh, anoxic period where you got sufficient time for the mixed liquor to denitrify, to deplete the oxygen first, deoxygenize, and then to uh, denitrify and, and take that oxygen tied up in the nitrate and nitrite, convert it to nitrogen gas. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more reliable uh, system and it's got a lot more uh, 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 robust design in it versus a system where you have to really control uh, your process and monitor it closely. Um, and we've had, uh, Parkson has many, many installations with the Wavox system. Uh, a typical Wavox system uh, in a municipal application would produce a, a total nitrogen uh, of less than eight uh, running a basic Wavox electrical control system. So again, to summarize advantages of the uh, wave oxidation versus a conventional system, and the Biolag Basin, it's a single basin, no separate stages required, no concrete walls, no energy needed for internal recycles or mixers. Uh, simple automated controls that can run the, the system and uh, really simple operation from, from the operator's standpoint. Versus in a conventional system, you got uh, doing construction, additional costs for, for the separate zones, uh, concrete, and a more additional energy needed for the mixers and, and, and the uh, recycle pumps. And it's also something, it's all these components and, 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 uh, and uh, mechanical equipment re require more maintenance and attention from the operator. So it's a much more simplified system as a, a conventional um, activated sludge BNR system. With the, with the typical BIOLAC system, parts that provide a mechanical guarantee over the aeration system, clarifiers and the, and the blowers, electrical controls. Uh, 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 Parkson can also provide uh, the screening for the headworks, uh, uh, can provide as well the uh, filtration and the disinfection. And beside that, Parkson provide a process guarantee for the effluent quality. Uh, it, uh, will, will guarantee uh, BOD and total suspended solids of less than 10, uh, ammonia uh, less than one, um, regardless if it's a cold climate, uh, total nitrogen of eight in a typical municipal application and total phosphorus of two. Um, or the, the, with the wave ox controls. Um, and then uh, if it's an ENR application, such as in areas like in the Chesapeake Bay where total nitrogen required is less than three and phosphorus less than 0.3, uh, Parkson can offer Dynasand filters uh, combined with the Biolac designed um, together uh, to meet uh, the lowest ENR limits currently uh, 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 put in the permits uh, in the US. So we'll go through some existing installations and talk about uh, kind of different, slightly different Biolax design. This is a, a plant in California. Uh, I mean, one of the things to note is uh, 
the two parallel systems with common walls, the, the minimum concrete construction, three clarifiers, you'll see the chains are, are moving, so the, the, dif the distance between the chains is not consistent, and you'll, you'll see that very typical in any biolac process. Uh, on the clarifier, you'll see the weir assembly on the top and also the rake mechanism, uh, the floating uh, component of it uh, on the surface. Uh, here's a, a, a biolac basin uh, before they add the water in it, so you'll see uh, everything is, is set, um, it's already installed and, and set on the floor, and then they'll start introducing uh, the raw wastewater and, and uh, start seeding the process for startup. Um, this is a pile-like installation and pile-like installation in Wisconsin, a uh, very cold climate. Uh, you, you never see any freezing on the pile-like basin on the aeration. Um, so therefore, the, the, the mixed liquor is always um, in, in a temperature that still allows biological activity and, and biological reduction of, of, nutrient, of nutrients and of uh, organic matter. And the aerations are still moving at the bottom and, and still mixing the basin, keeping it completely mixed. Um, here's another installation in Nevada uh, where uh, it's a common, common uh, uh, wall with the clarifier and uh, biolac uh, chains on the side as well. Uh, tip, the, 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 typically, you see the air header coming and feeding each biolac chain independently, and that's, that's kind of shown in this, uh, this picture. Another point of uh, plant in Washington that converted the existing lagoon, they had two lagoon basins and they wanted to move to BNR, uh, activated sludge process. You'll see the major difference in footprint uh, converting the existing lagoon into uh, a biolac and, and further in the future, the second lagoon, which originally was converted to a sludge holding, was also, I believe, converted into a biolac basin. So it's a major reduction in footprint. Um, so to summarize the advantages of the biolac process, it's a really uh, simple operation, excellent effluent quality um, during all seasons and even cold climate. Uh, it's a very minimal biosolids production, therefore uh, minimal cost for the, for the uh, municipality uh, for further stabilization and, and, and removal of the biosolids. It's a fine bubble aeration, therefore uh, superior oxygen transfer in the liquid, um, lower energy for that. Uh, very simple to maintain. A lot of the, you never have to drain the basin, uh, which is costly for a conventional system. Uh, operators can be on a boat and remove the system from the surface to do any maintenance needed. Um, and uh, in terms of uh, civil work and, and installation costs, it's, it's really provide one of the, the lowest installation costs on the market. Um, any questions? Uh, Farid, I saw that you have about 100 uh, industrial applications. I was just wondering what type of applications those are. Uh, Biolac really has several uh, uh, industrial uh, applications or in installations. Uh, a lot of them are in the food in industry and in the meat packing and meat rendering industries. Uh, there's also some Biolac installations in, in the, uh, for example, the icing fluid for airplanes. So as long as the industrial wastewater is biologically treated um, and it's not uh, a, to a toxin or inhibitory to the biology, it can be treated uh, with, with the Biolac system. Fareed, my question was about the installations that might have been problematic, uh, and if so, uh, if you had any, uh, what were the failures uh, resulting from the Biolac? In terms of uh, issues, to answer your question on, on uh, some, some issues that might come up uh, in a Biolac plant, uh, the Biolac, in terms of hydraulic and peak flows for storm events, is designed with, with a lot of uh, conservatism uh, to handle hydraulic peak flows. Uh, uh, therefore, the head loss will always be minimum. Uh, in terms of uh, peak loads, uh, because of the long sludge days, the process uh, can uh, uh, absorb any uh, uh, shock load coming into the plant. Uh, the main issues that I've seen is sometimes if there's a, a, a toxic load coming in uh, and, and an oil spill, for example, in one of the plant that came in that could be inhibitory with the biology. And in terms of the equipment, uh, if there is any uh, uh, damages, for example, grit or any of the uh, uh, um, inerts coming into the, to the biolac basin that could damage the diffusers uh, that shouldn't be, that should have been removed in the headworks, that could sometimes be an issue. And again, uh, the, uh, the, the biolac basin, whether it's on the um, aeration or the clarification, everything can be maintained from the surface, so it's really easy maintenance in that regard. Hi, Fareed. Considering the small footprint, can the Wavox logic overcome the need for an equalization basins for l uh, large changes in flows during the day? 
And as I mentioned in my previous answer, uh, the, the BILAC is designed uh, with, with really uh, uh, low hydraulic uh, head loss uh, between the clarifiers and, and even at, at peak flows. So there's really uh, no need for a Q basin. Um, and even industrial application, uh, because the BILAC is a long sludge age, uh, it can take the, any um, uh, uh, daily variations in load. Some industrial applications only work a um, few days a week. The BILAC can still handle that uh, uh, shock load without the need to stabilize and equalize that flow, whether it's hydraulic load or whether it's uh, process load to uh, equalize it in a, in a separate basin. So most of the BILAC uh, processes, you, you, you don't really have the need to have an EQ basin. Freed, uh, on one of your slides you mentioned low installed total cost and just interested in finding out what does that mean in comparison with other treatment processes and technologies? Uh, really the BILAC uh, uh, being in an earthen basin, uh, lined or unlined earthen basin, with having the common wall and the integral clarifier uh, is, a, is a major uh, saving in concrete and in terms of uh, uh, dollar amount versus a conventional system, typically BILAC range between three to four dollars per gallon treated versus uh, almost double that in a conventional system. So it's, it's a really tremendous save in terms of construction cost. And question number two is, you also talked about low maintenance and operating cost. Again, how do you equate that with other treatment technologies, the differences between the two? Mm -hmm. uh, for the second question, the, the BILAC basin uh, really requires from the operators uh, based on the size of the plant, obviously, maybe, maybe uh, four to, uh, two to four hours or maybe up to six hours uh, maximum based on the size of the plant versus in conventional system, you, you really don't have any uh, greasing to do or any other additional tasks. So it's really minimum operator attention throughout the, the daily tasks. Um, thank you very much, uh, every, everybody, for your time and attention. Uh, again, my name is Fareed Cade. I'm with Parkson, and I have my contact information on the last slide. Uh, please feel free to contact me for any questions on the BILAC process uh, or any inquiries you have or, or opportunities that you might want to consider for, for the BILAC process. I'll be very happy uh, to assist and, and, and provide any um, uh, comments or ideas uh, for your design. Thank you.